well as you can see it still needs a little work um the uh the first shift uh it uh it shifts it in the second at four miles an hour and from first shift to second shift or yeah from first to second is four and six or second to uh third is seven and from let's see third to fourth is 14 miles an hour i think that's what it's right now but yeah it uh, it just takes some time but uh yeah because when i first got on it i was going in first gear i don't know seven or eight and it wouldn't go into seven so it just takes a little little while to work it in but as you can see uh, you know it's just what i was doing today but um i might wash it later and I'll, i'm gonna talk about some other things i aim to do too so i'll let you know um what i decided all right welcome back yeah i was cut short there a little bit at the end um yeah um what i didn't just previously mention is it's hard to shift and with most manual transmissions there's usually a sweet spot trying to find that sweet spot on this machine takes a little getting used to but what i mentioned before is where it seems to want to shift to the next gear even though it's kind of still a little difficult uh, from first gear to seconds four uh, miles an hour and from second to thirds like seven eight ish miles an hour and then from uh, third and up it's like 14 miles an hour right now um, it still is kind of hard to shift up i have to change shoes because my steel toe boots uh, are just too too big to fit underneath there yeah, I'm probably going to wash it today. As you can see, it's gotten a little dirty sitting out here and stuff. But uh, let's see what the rims look like after I painted them. Still looking good. Okay. Above one or nothing like that. Shouldn't be. One little spot on, on the other side. Don't know what it is. Oh, maybe it was. Maybe I thought, oh, right here. You can't really see it, I don't think. It don't really show up. It's not a real big deal. But yeah, I might wash it. I noticed a little bit of white smoke. That's most likely just uh, condensation in the tailpipe. Uh, it's been, it's like 41 degrees uh, this morning probably do and moisture I, I felt the seat uh last night when i got off work it was a little wet so yeah anyways so i might wash it today um still waiting for the stickers and the, the plate to get the plates but uh, yeah i'm paying trying to pay it off fast Another thing I might do is uh, I was looking at these bolts here or these nuts yeah. uh, and what what kind of coating they have on them uh, like you see how shiny looking those look most likely they're zinc coated which is a corrosive uh, coating uh, it's not necessarily the best but uh i was looking at some of the older models new pictures of like the 300 and they pretty much uh, use that now on some of the other bolts it's different it's a different i think that one's it's different but uh anyways um what i might do is uh get some crc marine grade uh rust inhibitor you can spray that on stuff and even here and up underneath there you can use it on cars some people use fluid film i thought about doing that before i painted those hubs 
but I might I might use some of that to um, after I wash and clean it because you're supposed to get any uh, grease or anything like that off first. But I may spray that as like a uh, like an undercoating. It, it's not always necessary, especially down south. But up here, if I ride it up and down through here during the winter time, after it's you know when it's cold, just to warm it up and stuff. Uh, in case they've sawed at the roads or stuff, I don't want road saw on it. Now, they don't usually do the back alley, and it'd probably be okay, but it's brand new, uh, and it's a four-wheeler, but uh, I'll, uh, I might do that. Just, you know, just kind of added peace of mind. Because up here in Wisconsin, and I'm sure in other places, road salt and brine is very bad to eat away. Uh, under carriages, under bodies of vehicles, bad. Like in a few years, a brand new vehicle will look, depending on the, the model itself, uh, will look bad. The fenders, I mean, it don't take long. And I know, you know, this won't really be on the road, but just in case, I may do that. I, I need to wash it first. I'll probably just use Dawn dish detergent. Uh, but uh, because you know, I've seen these off-road washes, uh, and people do reviews on them, and I tried the chemical guys. I just didn't see a lot of, uh, it didn't impress me much. So I'll probably use just regular Dawn, warm water, and uh, then rinse it off. I don't have a pressure washer, and it's not dirty from riding, so I'll probably just do something like that for now. It's not really that dirty, but, you know, if I'm going to apply that, might as well wash the whole thing. Uh, but uh, it's not a real big deal. I probably won't do that till tomorrow, but that's just an update. Um, but, yeah, that, that I think that looks pretty good. Uh, definitely looks better than what it did. I mean, I know the rim's kind of dirty, but. You know, once once you wipe it all off and it, you go out and take it riding and, and get sturdy and stuff. But, um, yeah, I was looking more into uh, the overall build quality and stuff. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't regret my decision. I'm still looking at covers. I think I might just go with the, uh, the Honda. Uh, cover instead of uh, a tough cover. I seen where some reviews people when they got it, it was ripped. So I think I changed my mind on that one. There's there's seal skins, but I see people say they aren't as good as they seem. Uh, now Cabela's has a deluxe one. It's about ninety dollars. Uh, they seem to have pretty good reviews, and uh, the deluxe model. The Honda one seems to do okay. I mean, it's good reviews too. So I might as well just get that one. Um, Moose Utilities also makes a, a pretty good one according to reviews. So, but uh, I think I'm gonna get ready and eat some breakfast as I'm still waking up. But uh, yeah, I was looking at uh, the type of bolts that they use nowadays. And I, I'm pretty sure the lug nuts are the same type that they come on the Honda 300s. Because, uh, you you know, corrosion and rust, you know, if you can prevent it, you know, it preserves your machine. Again, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's a four-wheeler. Yeah, it's a four-wheeler, but, you know, if you tear it up and swamp it and all that stuff, you know, and then try to sell it, that's just... That's not right. You don't do people that way. But uh, I know young people, they're inexperienced, inconsiderate and stuff, and they do that. But, uh, yeah, right here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is if you uh, plug in uh, your 12 volt here. I, I don't remember. I have to double check on that. But uh, when I do get a chance, I'm going to try to get the, uh, the actual service manual. I seen one on eBay. I think it was $280, but I think I can get a, like a PDF version for a computer for way cheaper than that. But, uh, 
I'll just have to wait and see. Again, that's not critical. Uh, Optimate battery charger, probably something I'm gonna get. But I'm on, and when it gets real cold, I'm taking the battery out, taking it upstairs, warming it up, keeping it in the house. Um, well, that'll probably conclude it for this brief video. Uh, yeah, when you first get these machines, the shifter is going to be tight. This one was extremely tight. Like, it did not want to come out of first initially. Or go into first. And come out of first. But that's normal. Uh, I don't remember my 350 being that difficult. Oh, it was electric shift. Never mind. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, I'll see you again here next time on On the Ground.